Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from the about to be rainy Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be why the Hoover must be denied. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the Hoover, it must be denied at all costs. The narcissist many times will attempt to draw people back into the relationship to extract more resources from them. Keep this in mind, the narcissist has not changed. They have not found Jesus. They, they are not healed. They have not improved their life. What they have done is they've only fine-tuned their skills of manipulation. And a Hoover is when they are testing the waters to see if you will take another bite of the forbidden fruit. Now, many times people, they cannot go no contact and block the narcissist. On virtually every video I create, I suggest to do the opposite, to go no contact block these people, delete them, remove them, and all fly monkeys and people associated with them, if not now when. But if you can't do that, I understand. It means that you're still tethered to the narcissist for some reason. Maybe it's your mom or dad or your uh, sibling, or maybe it's the narcissistic boss that you have to see when you go into work. Who knows? The point being, or maybe you're, it's your spouse, you're trying to get broken free from them and trying to divorce them, etc. And you still need to be in communication with them. I understand all these things. What I'm sharing is eventually you should go no contact. However, don't accept the Hoover. The Hoover can come out of left field. It can come after weeks, months, years, even decades, because the narcissist is on a constant search for a new shiny object or at times for recycled people, people that they believe once elevated them in their life for a period of time. And that certainly was you. Remember, you did your best when you were in the narcissistic relationship. You gave to a fault. Maybe you were even a people pleaser. I can assure you, you did not have boundaries. Maybe you were even naive but your empathy was weaponized against you. Your love was weaponized against you. All the relationships that you had before you entered that relationship, most of them were blown up, or most of those people, they did not see you the same way after that relationship ended because a few reasons there. One, the smear campaign was underway that you didn't even know about. Why would you know what a smear campaign was? But number two, these people watched you, and they watched you change, and they watched your uh, mindset change and they watched how much attention you gave to the narcissist now that was not your fault remember you were existing in the narcissistic fog the narcissist in the beginning of that relationship most likely first of all they were wearing a mask manipulating you and they most likely love bombed you and showered you with fake adoration sh showered you with fake love showered you with fake empathy and, and any other thing they could to get you to fall in love with them or to get you close to them that's when they learned about your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, your past relationships, what you wanted to do in the present, what you wanted to do in the future. And the narcissist sized all of these things up. They took mental notes and they filed them away in their tiny little pea brain and they weaponized these against you at a later date. That's why they played on your heartstrings. That's why if you are getting hoovers, that's why the narcissist is trying to play on your heartstrings right now. They are trying to get you stuck back in the past when you were in that relationship with them. Think about everything you did when you were with the narcissist in that relationship. What did you do for them? Did you put a roof over their head? Did you go into business with them? Were you in love with them? Did you elevate them? Did you, did you put their life to a new plateau where it wasn't previously? Yes, yes, and yes, you did. You did all those things and more and your resources were becoming depleted. As I mentioned so frequently on videos, your time, your energy, your health, your love, your respect, your empathy, your money, everything about you was taking a hit left, right, and center. And what you were doing is you were working for the narcissist, you were working for the relationship, and you didn't even know it. That's why I talk about these expressions on the channel, terms that I've coined over the years. One would be the unpaid helper, that was you. You were doing whatever you could to appease the narcissist. You were doing whatever you could to keep them satisfied and satiated. You would be on call whenever they wanted you, morning, noon, or night. Whenever they texted you or told you to pick up the phone, that's what you would do. Another thing is, you were the walking apology. You would apologize for things that you didn't even do because you were tolerating their poor behavior and you were regulating the narcissist. And what that was, was not helping you out at all because you were trying to put putty in the uh, boat that the, the narcissist was puncturing all the holes in because that boat was going to capsize eventually, meaning that was the narcissistic relationship. We now know that each and every narcissistic relationship has an expiration date, every single one of them. It's just a matter of time when they're gonna expire. 
Will it be today, tonight, tomorrow, in a week, a month? Did it already happen? The whole point of that is, is the narcissist cannot change. And when they have crossed, when you have crossed their mind for whatever reason, they at times, not always, but at times will attempt to hoover you. Now, why do you think the narcissist would attempt to hoover you if you've gone no contact? I'll tell you why, because you provided things for them that they could not otherwise provide for themselves. And I already mentioned some prime examples. You see, the narcissist wants to take from people. They wanna take from people who have high levels of love and empathy and resources, and they want to keep those people stuck and trapped in the narcissistic loop of manipulation. They wanna keep people stuck in the web of devaluation. And the narcissist knows what they're doing. Think about how many opportunities and chances you gave the narcissist to change. Think about how many times you turned a blind eye to the narcissist's poor behavior. Think about how many red flags you ignored. Think about how many times you did not trust your instincts and intuition. Think about how many times you would be doing something saying, I don't think I should be doing this, but all right, I'll do it again, I guess. You would be doing it because if you didn't do it, there would be a big price to pay from the narcissist. Maybe you would get the silent treatment for a few days. Maybe you would be triangulated. Maybe you would experience a rage fit. Maybe you would experience verbal abuse. Maybe you, the smear campaign would get ramped up. Who knows what would happen, but there would be a big price tag to pay by the narcissist uh, punishing you for being you. And that's what I mentioned so frequently in other videos in the last couple of years. The narcissist does wanna punish people and they wanna punish people for having high levels of empathy, high levels of the ability to love, being kind, considerate, and giving to a fault, etc. because the narcissist will weaponize anything they can against the person that possesses what the narcissist does not have. Play that again. The narcissist is shallow, they're a coward, they're a bully, there's nothing to them. Many times the narcissist does have the loudest voice in the room and many times the narcissist beats people into submission. I'm not talking physically, I'm talking mentally, emotionally, financially, verbally, into getting them to do what they want. That's why the narcissist surrounds themselves with enablers. That's why the narcissist surrounds themselves with people caught up in the trauma bond. That's why the narcissist surrounds themselves with, with flying monkeys. And that's why nobody is immune to the narcissistic relationship, not one person, until you get the wisdom, until you've healed and you've reached the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference when you no longer care about the narcissist or any people from that period of time because you've gotten the message, you've received the light bulb moments, you've applied the tools, you've journaled, you've seen a therapist, you've meditated, you've watched videos, you've read, you've healed childhood wounds, etc. You've done everything you possibly could to break the shackles, to break the chains of the narcissistic relationship, and you've done that or you're doing it. So accepting a Hoover, that won't happen. Ex being Hoovered, that is a possibility, but don't think about that. There are many ways the narcissist could Hoover people if they wanted to. A prime example is email. If you didn't block them on email, they could uh, create a phantom email account and send an email. Now I'm not suggesting that you look for that because that's not what you should be doing. If you get a strange email in the mail, I would be deleting it. I wouldn't be reading anything about it. It would be go right in the bin and it would be sent to spam or trash. The other thing is many times the narcissist will use a friend or get a burner phone and maybe text you if they still have your phone number and they'll send silly, pathetic texts like this. Hi, how are you? Thinking of you, how are you doing? And again, they'll be misspelled or there will be no capital letters, no proper uh, punctuation. But this is what the narcissist does, they're lazy. They don't wanna lift a finger to do anything for anybody in the relationship. The only thing the narcissist ever does uh, work-wise in the relationship is in the beginning of that relationship in the love bomb slash euphoric stage or in, in love bomb stages of, this, of the narcissistic cycle because that's when they're trying to draw people back in. That's when they shower people with fake empathy and fake love and fake kindness and they have found Jesus and they do care and they have seen a therapist and they've healed and they're, they're working on themselves, etc. Throw that all out the window actions speak louder than words and if you're being honest and authentic with yourself just go back in time think about all the abuse you endured the verbal physical mental emotional spiritual financial think of how the narcissist blew up all the relationships that you were a part of think about all the money that was spent in the narcissistic relationship it would never be enough again as I mentioned you could own your own country you could have every uh, amount of dollars in the world the narcissist would tell you that it wasn't enough and that someone else had more and that you should be doing more than you're doing. That's why these people are bottomless pits. That's why these people need to, to be removed from your life. That's why you should not be hooverable if possible. And that's why you should not accept a hoover. 
Remember, the narcissistic abusive cycle, it's a loop. It goes around and around and around. And it goes with the love bomb slash euphoric stage in the beginning. Second part's the devaluation stage where you are existing for most of the relationship. The third part is the ending of the relationship, whether you were discarded or you ended it yourself. Either way, my heart goes out to you. And the fourth part is at times, understand at times a Hoover. Not everybody gets a Hoover. Some people get multiple Hoovers. Some people will never get a Hoover. It all depends on the narcissist and what you have done to insulate and protect yourself. Now on the channel, I s suggest so strongly and so frequently to do your best to insulate and protect yourself, not only from the narcissist, but from day-to-day -day energy vampires. And many of these people will be in your own immediate family. Many of these people will be in the community you live in. Many of these people will be in the hobby groups you're in. Many of these people will be your lifelong friends that you've just identified they're toxic people or energy vampires. The whole point now on the path once you've healed or once you're well on, the, on your way to healing is understand not oversharing anything about yourself, number one. Number two, don't have the same expectations for others as you have for yourself now that you've healed from the post, from the relationship. Because you've gone through something that most people don't go through. You've conquered and knocked out the narcissist. You've beaten the cycle. You have now gone no contact, etc. You are stronger than you ever thought possible. I know it, you know it, and the narcissist definitely knows it because you have gone no contact. And this is why you should not accept a Hoover. So let's just say this. Let's say a Hoover comes out of left field whenever it happens, day, week, month, year, whenever. Well, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna say, oh my gosh, this person is so pathetic. They're still thinking about me down the road. They had the best thing in me and they lost the best thing, which was me, which was you is who I'm referring to. And now that you've healed and you're in a new relationship and you've probably relocated and you've recreated new friendships or built new friendships and you've reclaimed your hobbies and your health has returned, your finances have returned and everything's returned, your clarity has returned, your everything's returned back to you. Then you get a Hoover. Well, in the past, in the way back, the Hoover, when the relationship first ended, that is probably what you were looking for because you were thinking that the narcissist was still pining for you or that the narcissist would give you closure. The narcissist never cared about you. They didn't then, they don't now, and they won't in the future. And as far as clarity goes, uh, as far as closure goes, the narcissist will never give you closure. They wanna keep you stuck and trapped in the loop, which is why if the narcissist has hoovered you, what do you think they're doing? They're not telling you that they love you and they've changed and they found the Lord and everything. They're trying to keep you trapped back in the loop because they don't have the fuel source. They don't have the supply source that they once had, the grade A source of supply, which was you. Now, should the narcissist know anything about you? No, they shouldn't. Should they know your hair color? No, they shouldn't. Should they know where you're living? Absolutely not. Should they know who you're dating if you are? No, they shouldn't. Should they know what hobbies or groups or communities you're a part of? Absolutely not. Should they know your social media presence if you have one? No, they shouldn't. Should they be blocked everywhere? Absolutely. Should you be blocking anyone that is one step away from the narcissist, which means their own family members or friends that you guys had in common, etc.? Yes, you should, because the narcissist should not be privileged to know anything about you. This is what a Hoover is. This is what the Hoover is meant to do. It's meant to have you go back in time thinking about the good times of the narcissistic relationship. And did you have good times? Of course you did. But were the good times outweighed by the toxic times? Yes, they were. You need to be honest and authentic with yourself. If you're uncertain about the, uh, let's say time has passed, and you're uncertain about that relationship, just for a moment, let's say you are, just get out the sheet of paper, write down the pro con list about that relationship, Wrote, write down the benefits that were good for you when you were in it, and the not good things, and yet that will open your eyes. It will remind you why you, ent uh, why you exited that narcissistic relationship. And understand when you entered that relationship, you didn't know what narcissism was. You weren't taught this in school. And the narcissist did not hand you a two page report and say, here's who I am. Here's what I've done to people before you. Here's what I'll do with you. And here's what I'll do with people after I discard you. They didn't do that. They played on your heartstrings. They opened up their fakeness to you. They glommed onto you. They assimilated with you. They, uh, they attracted you to them and they told you that they were interested in all of your hopes, dreams, and aspirations, and they picked up your hobbies, etc. So example, let's say you golfed and you went skiing and surfing. Well, the narcissist never picked up a nine iron in their life. They don't know how to surf because they're not coordinated, and they've never hit the slopes because they came from the desert. But they claim they did all those things. See what I'm saying? They'll say anything. They will promise you the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they'll deliver you nothing, absolutely zero. That's why the path is to go no contact and block these people. 
That is why if you were hoovered, do not accept the hoover. Throw the item in the bin, throw it in the trash, donate the flowers to a church, do whatever you're gonna do, but don't give the narcissist any satisfaction. Don't let them know anything about you. You've gone through the cycle. You've healed or you are healing. You've beaten something or you're about to beat something that most people don't experience and most people can't even wrap their head around what a Hoover is or who the narcissist is or how challenging it is to break free from these toxic creatures. But that's not you. You've done something, you've accomplished something. You know how, how long and how hard it was for you to get to where you are right now. And all that hard work that you did, all the heavy lifting that you placed in yourself, it's worth something. It's worth your sanity. It's worth your clarity. It's worth your health. It's worth your life. So do not accept a Hoover. Not now, not tomorrow, not in a week, not in a month, not in a year. And my hope is you are unhooverable. And my hope is you did not receive a Hoover. And my hope is, again, if in the future you did receive a Hoover, do not accept it. The narcissist has not changed. They're trying to hit you in a moment of weakness or they're trying to play on your heartstrings, but they definitely want something from you. Don't give it to them ever again. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful rainy Carolinas and it's about to pour. This is Andrew. Namaste. I love you all. God bless you. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. I love you all. And keep in mind, if you accepted a Hoover in the past, I know you've learned from it. So drop comments below. If you're being Hoovered right now, be strong enough to not Hoover. I mean, to not accept the Hoover. Maintain no contact and understand there's a reason you went no contact and understand there's a reason the narcissist is who they are. It's because they can't change. They can only shape shift. They are a dark energy source and they just glide through or slither through life looking to take whatever they can from unsuspecting people. But that no longer will be you. I love you all. God bless you. And I will, I'll talk to you tomorrow because it's going to rain. Bye, everybody.